this world has to offer The here and gone that leaves you wanting more But can't satisfy Father, forgive me for taking so long to see That you're all I need With every to die. Well, they'll lay my body in the ground and say one last goodbye. But when our Lord is ready and the trumpet
sea. He cleansed the spotted leper. He spoke with authority. He broke the chains of sin and set the captive free. He was so much man that he slept in a boat. Yet he was so much God that the wind ceased when he spoke. He was so much man that he wept when Lazarus died. Yet he was so much God. Lazarus came forth when he cried. He was so much man that he thirsted.
Love's like a hurricane I am a tree Bending beneath The weight of his wind and mercy When all of a sudden I am unaware of these afflictions Eclipsed by glory And I realize just how beautiful you are And how great your affections are for me And oh, how he loves us Amen It's good to see everybody here at spring break week Good to see everybody Everybody's traveling, people are in different places. I had several phone calls today, people was gone. But uh, it's good when you can take a couple of days and go and go and do and spend time with the family. So it's good to see. We got a lot of kids, had a lot for supper tonight. Appreciate the people that cooked in the back and had uh, pork, uh, pork sandwiches. And I think almost everything was gone. So that was just right. There may be a little bit if somebody wants it. Um, just head back there and check. Um, prayer requests. Um, does anybody have any more prayer requests? I got these from this past week, but yes, sir. Yes, sir, you. Who, who, who was that? You got here. That's right. Yes, sir. Any others? With the what? Oh. Uh, Oh, good. So we now we on the other side for it, Mr. Eldon. Amen. Y'all are in the back row. Y'all went from the front row to the back row. I'm not sure if that's a problem or not. I'll let you know. That's right. See, if Miss Gill was here, I'd think y'all was cutting up, but. Oh, yeah. Ah. Yeah, Wade just lost his mother-in-law over here, Miss, uh, Miss Tina Fay. Any others? Yeah, Skip, I heard you. Oh, Skip Skipper, you ain't in your spot. I was looking for you over here. I heard you. I heard you. <coughs> Any others? Yes, sir. My aunt Diane Lee has breast cancer. Miss Diane. Miss Diane Lake has breast cancer. Yes, sir. What's her name? Linda. Miss Linda. Any others? Amen. Any others? It's good if we pray for each other. You know, and sometimes we forget. To, to, to pray for other people. We pray for stuff. We pray for things. And we pray that God will bless what we're doing or what we're about to do. And we get in a routine sometimes. And we, if we're not careful, we'll forget to go through our prayer list. I, I like a prayer list. And um, I hadn't done it online like I used to. I got, I, boy, I, I ain't a big Facebook person. So when I spoke on, preached on Facebook for however long last year, that was a lot for me to be on Facebook. And I've done all the prayer requests on Facebook. That takes up a lot of time. But I want to go back on there and do prayer prayer requests because it opened a lot of doors to talk to people because they were, uh, while we're in here doing good, there's folks that are hurting. While we're in here fine, people are, listen, there's, people's lives are upside down. Uh, I was just thinking that too. I said, well, there's Miss Edna. 
Okay. Amen. Well, you're being prayed for, sister. Amen. Amen. Any other? Amen. Uh, any other unspoken? Amen. Let's remember to lift each other up, pray for our church, and pray for the strength in it. And um, Vacation Bible School is coming up. Um, we've got another summer program coming up we're going to do this year for uh, like third through sixth grade. And looking forward to that. It's going to be a three-day thing. So kids come. They're here all day. Uh, they get Bible study in the morning. It's like a camp during the day for them. So, And we'll need some help. So if anybody's got some days, uh, that'd be great. Uh, looking forward to that. Um, maybe next year go to five days. But uh, we'll start with three days. That's Bible study during the day. It's just like summer camp, except they go home at night. Thank the Lord. So... But it's, for the, it's really third through sixth grade because a lot of them see their brothers and sisters go off to summer camp, and they don't get to go. So it's good for them to have a little camp, you know, and, and uh, we're going to try to take them. Um, Brother Johnny's one day. They can play up there. thought about going out to Loris Walker Park, maybe fish. And um, if we can get the we're, – we're trying to use the school buses at Brantley County because it's going to be countywide, not just for our church. We're going to offer it for the county. And that way, um, if we do it that way, the, the – the bus barn let us use a bus when we used to do it at Hickox. So, and Jeff Johns is the guy, so he's pretty cool. We'll see if he lets us use a bus. Um, any others before we pray? Let's pray. Lord, thank you for this time together, for your goodness you've shown us, Lord. We, we stand here tonight, Lord, just so thankful that people are, are getting better in some places, Lord, and some are, some are being healed. And we're just thankful, God, that um, you hear our prayers and you ask us to come and lift each other up. So, Lord, undoubtedly, there's a way that we can get better, and, Lord, it's through you physically. So, God, I pray today for those that we've lifted up and, Lord, those that are on our prayer list that you heal where it be your will, and just pray, God, that you'll help us come to grips with things when, um, Lord, you choose to heal people by taking them home to be with you. We pray, God, for strength in people's lives and in their homes. Uh, God, now at this time, uh, with all the, the, this chaos in the world, just pray, Lord, that mamas and daddies uh, raise their children. They tell them what's right, Lord, and they do it in front of them. We pray, God, you'll bless this church as we try to minister to this community. And there are certain ones, Lord, in my prayer list tonight I lift up to you as well. You know who they are. Just pray, God, you'll be beside each one of those. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Take your Bibles with me. Turn to 1 Samuel chapter 16. And I knew I would do this. Um, I got studying in David a little bit, and I've enjoyed. So we're going to take a little, uh, what, what's the good word, hiatus from um, Moses just for a little bit. And I'll be back in there in a couple of weeks. But I really enjoy um, the, the life of David. And, you know, it's a, I think sometimes we know snapshots of different stories about different people in the Bible. We know, you know, what's the biggest story you know about David? What's the best what story you know about David? David and Goliath. Everybody knows about David and Goliath. He killed the giant. He killed the, but, you know, there's a lot in David's life to be admired you know, not just that he was bold and brave and went to fight a, a giant. Um, we'll talk about some of that today. But let me ask you this question as we start out David's life. What was his daddy's name? Jesse. His daddy's name was Jesse. How many brothers did he have? I heard seven. Did I say seven? He had seven brothers. He was the eighth. He was the eighth brother. And I know that the oldest, I think, was Eliab, and the next one was Abinadab, and and then that was the only two that was mentioned. Now, what was the name of the prophet that came and anointed David king? Samuel. Samuel was the prophet for Israel. Now, before well, who was the king at this time? Now, Samuel had anointed the original king before David. So what was the original king's name? Saul. So we have King Saul. Now, what's the reason? Am I content can I tell me the reason why King Saul now is not going to be the king very long, that, that God is ordaining another king. Why, why is that happening? That's right. Amen. You know, two sins. At one, one place, he, uh, he was told to annihilate the Amalekites, I believe. And he, when he was told to go in there and they, they defeat the Amalekites, he was, they, uh, God said to destroy everything there. Don't keep anything, nothing. Well, he kept the, 
the best sheep, the best cows, and he said, well, we were just going to sacrifice. He kept the king alive. Um, who killed that king, by the way? Anybody remember? The Bible says Samuel did. That Saul kept that king alive for whatever reason, and Samuel, the Bible says that Samuel chopped him into pieces. I can almost see him angry because he didn't obey God. They should have killed the king when they, when they brought him in there. So several things happened. So we have Saul, Samuel's the prophet. He anointed Saul. Saul, big, tall, good-looking fella. Saul sinned twice. Yes, sir? Well, that's right. But, and, but here's the thing. Here's, here, in, the, in the Old Testament, it was about obedience. Obey me and you'll be okay. And that started in Exodus chapter 19 with the children of Israel. God told the children of Israel, don't climb the mountain when I go up. And if you obey me, you'll be okay. And, and it, was, it was better to obey than to sacrifice. He said, if, if you, you, know, you ever... You ever had, a, had, had your child outside with you? For instance, me and Emma was outside one time. We was gonna, I was going to cut down a tree. And uh, it's a pretty big tree, and it was lean, and it wasn't no big deal. It wasn't, no, wasn't hard to cut. So I cut a wedge out of one side, and I looked over. She was right where I told her to be. You know, she was right behind another tree, far enough behind me. Everything was okay. Well, I start cutting into this other, and I'm using a uh, saw with a bow, big bow saw. So I'm putting that bow in the saw, and you can just feel somebody standing by you, you know. I mean, I about cut through the tree, and uh, she goes, taps me on my arm, and that gives me a heart attack, you know. I said, what are you doing? Her tree goes, pop. I dropped the saw, grabbed her, and run, you know. And I said, what are you doing? She said, um, um, I saw our dog run around the back. She said, I think he's out there. <laughs> you know, well, so then we had to go see if I'd cut the tree down on top of the dog, which we didn't. But what was best... I mean, that was a good thing, but what was best is for her to obey me because somebody wouldn't have got hurt. And that, that's, I, I, I completely understand. And in the New Testament, it's almost that way because it's like the Holy Spirit lives inside us and we've got some, some room, you know, some rope. And but here we are with, uh, with David. David winds up being anointed king. Uh, somebody tell me, do you, about what age was David when he anointed king traditionally? What do they say? 15, I've always thought 15. Um, I was reading behind um, Josephus, Flavius, Josephus, Flavius, I'm thinking. He was the Roman historian in the, in the times of Christ. He said that David was 11 at the time. I have no idea. But I've always heard he was 15. David was a good-looking young man, ruddy. I always thought ruddy would be kind of scruffy, you know. Ruddy meant good-looking, you know, and maybe, maybe, maybe red, red tint, red hair, I don't know. But they said he was a good-looking young man. They said he was brave, and he was warlike. Even here in chapter 16, where we get into verse 14 and, other, and, and, and further, he's automatically uh, seen as a warrior, even before he fights Goliath. Uh, so we're going to look at that. But look at the life of David as we, as we study through him, and look at the character traits that he has. And, and, and ask yourself, where does he get them from? Where does he get those character traits from? Now, when we talk about David, he's going to make this statement. When I was in the wilderness, you know, I, I slew a, a bear and a lion. And he said, and I had to do these things. Um, it, it gives us the idea. We know he was a shepherd. He, he tended the sheep. His brothers didn't. He was the youngest. That was his job. Him being the youngest brother, was his job. And his brothers didn't tend the sheep. He did. And when he wasn't tending them, they had a keeper. They had somebody that would keep the sheep when he wasn't there. So it wasn't a brother's job, just David's. And it was his job to make sure the keeper kept the sheep if he was somewhere else. So, so if you will, recognize that he was probably by himself a lot. By himself a lot. Anybody like to be by himself a lot? I love to be by myself. Um, and I don't know if that comes from not, have, not getting to be by yourself very much. But uh, yesterday I went fishing at the Okefenokee Swamp, and man, I fell in love out there. We caught 52 today. Emma caught 32, and outfished me. She's right now as mouthy as she's ever been. <laughs> you can't even talk to her. But anyway, but I went out yesterday. I was going to run my boat motor, and, uh, and you know, that was my excuse for going out there. You know. Well, 
I stayed there about five hours around my boat motor. But I went way out there and just sat. And, I, and there was nobody else out there. I just, was just I could hear the breeze and the fish. And I caught a few fish, but that wasn't why I was out there. But just be able to be alone and, and, and hear God speak. And, and God began to talk to me about this Sunday. He began to talk to me about some of you guys and you know, my heart. And I was praying for you. And, and listen, when a person gets by themselves, it unclouds life. A person needs time alone. You need time by yourself. And, and, and listen, when you get that time, talk to God. Talk to your creator. I can remember when I was a boy in seventh, eighth grade, I used to go hunting by myself in the afternoons. I, I had an old 20-gauge dub barrel shotgun, and I only had a slug and a number four buckshot for it. That's all I had. But I'd sit down by a tree, and I'd do my homework on an old tree line, and it looked out over some uh, little small piece of cornfield. And uh, I'd sit there, and I'd do my homework, and I'd sit. And I don't know how many... Uh, dreams I went through sitting by that old fence row. I remember looking at the barbed wire and counting all the holes in it and wondering who put it up. And, and, and all the years I sat there by that little piece of fence. One time I saw a bear come out in the field and I, I said, well, I'm going to shoot that bear. And I got thinking, okay, I've only got a, 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 you know, a slug and a number four buck shot. A shotgun, by the way. So it come out into the field and it broke corn and stacked in its arm like I would stack wood and three-legged it back over to the woods and dumped it out and come back over and stacked it in his arm just like I'd stack firewood. It was amazing. And I sat there and I watched it. I, those are things I can remember when I was alone. You know, when I was alone, I, I remember praying for, for certain things to happen in life. You know, things I wanted to see, places I wanted to be, what I wanted to do. But I can remember when I was alone, those things happened. And I enjoyed it. You, you got to be able to, you got, a person has to be able to be by themselves and be okay. A lot of people have a hard time with that. You know, you got to be around people constantly, and it's got to be, you know, now that we all text, you, you know, people's talking to somebody all the time. I don't like to. I, I'd be by, I like to be by myself. The only sad part about fishing at the swamp is at, at Buzzard Roost, brother, your cell phone works out there. Who in the world would have thought you said, I was thinking, woohoo, I'm out here, no excuses, I can't hear the phone. I was sitting there fishing, my cell phone went off down by my foot like to give me a heart attack. Out there just by myself. David probably had a lot of time just like that. Tending sheep. He probably knew what each sheep looked like. And, and as, he, as he did that, he, he began to, to get a relationship with God. Now, did he get it from his daddy? Most likely. They were religious. They were Israelites. They, they probably did all the stuff, all the feast days and all the things. So they knew about church stuff. But listen, whenever you know about him in your heart, it changes everything else. There's a lot of people that know a lot about the Bible, but very little about Jesus. Does that make sense? There's a lot of people that know a lot of facts, but what, when it comes time to fleshing it out and loving on people, you know, and, and being part of somebody's life, a lot of people don't know. And David did. So here we have David in chapter, the first part of chapter 16. Samuel anoints David as king. We know that, that, that Jesse brought all his sons before him. Uh, Samuel went down to... To, um, to Bethlehem, the, uh, Jesse was called the Bethlehemite. So when, when, he, when, he, when he, uh, Samuel showed up in Bethlehem, the people wanted to know, did he come in peace? You wonder why that is. You know what I'm telling me? I think I know, but I think it's because in the chapter before, he chopped that king into pieces. And the people there fought in the army with Saul, they were part. See, Saul had three thousand chosen people that fought around him. Some of them were from Bethlehem, no doubt. So they was making sure why Samuel was there because he just chopped the last fellow up into pieces. You know, they wanted to make sure that they were okay. You come in peace. He said, "I come in peace." So he brought the. You remember what he brought? Brought the heifer and a horn of oil to anoint, and he did that because he was afraid Saul would kill him when he came and anointed. Another person. But now he didn't tell Saul he was going to anoint somebody else. David was anointed. And here we have in verse 13. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. So there's just a few people that knows that David's been anointed king. His brothers, his family, his dad, all the people, David. And, and what happens after this? Do they go and... You know, 
say they need a house in the, in the city. David goes back to sheep. David goes back to sheep. So look what it says in verse 14. All, you'll always see this throughout David's life. You'll always see these words, but the Spirit of the Lord was with David. But the Spirit of the Lord was with David. And, and that gives us an insight to who he was. You know, we don't have to see that he went to the, to the uh, seminaries in Israel or Judah. He didn't go to any of those seminaries. But the Lord was with him. You, you find that throughout. That's a common thread throughout David's life. It'll say, but the Lord was with him. All the way up until um, he um, had Uriah killed when he committed adultery with his wife. But it always says David uh, followed the Lord. And, and he, he's even said to be a man after God's own heart. So that's David's life. The Spirit of the Lord departed from, from Saul. But the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. So he had trouble with the evil spirit. The evil spirit, just like uh, somebody asked me a question one time about this piece of Scripture right here. and says, well, I thought God couldn't handle anything that was evil. It doesn't say God handled it. God commanded it. God commanded just like he did Satan. You see, uh, you've got to understand there's evil spirits in this world that wants to trouble you all the time. Thank, thank the Lord we have the Holy Spirit living inside of us. And the Bible, according to Revelation, talks about when the Holy Spirit leaves this earth with us, that the, how's it, how's it, how's it said, that the, um, that, the, that the evil spirits will be let go, kind of. The, the, the Holy Spirit's kind of holding those things back, if you will. And, and, and we're, we don't have to put up with a lot of evil troublings, but we do sometimes. What happens is, and, and Saul's about to get involved with it, we, we already have issues in our life. Even a saved person, even, even somebody that's a blood-washed, born-again child of the king has issues sometimes that they either have dealt with in the past and got over it and they're, they've fallen for that same thing again. Because it's, it's funny, some people have certain things they fall for and they struggle all their life with those, those things, whatever it is. And... What happens is, 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 is we're kind of sensitive to that. And it's almost like a beach head. You ever, you ever uh, seen on these, these pretty beaches and places? I like uh, those Alaska shows. And, and they'll ride down the beaches. There's some rocky shores, but they're always looking for trees. You know, always looking for firewood. And one piece of firewood is all the same to me. But every now and then there'll be a piece of beach. And that's where they pull their boat up. They'll drive for miles, find a little small piece of beach so they can pull their boat up on. And that's kind of what... It's kind of a beachhead. It lets that person into the land. So they couldn't get up there any other way. But because there's a piece of beach, they can pull up on there with their boat and get out and go in. The devil has those with us. You see, there's things I fall for. I get aggravated. I have short, I, 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 my temper's short sometimes. I get sideways. I, you know, I get aggravated. I, I don't know. I've always been that way. I pray about it. I, I, prayer for patience is a hard thing. I'm always in the price check line, you know, so, so listen, that's a beachhead. That's something that the devil can work on me with. If the Lord's going to trouble me, I'm sorry, if the devil's going to trouble me with something, it's going to be something concerning things like that. Um, you know, just saying it. You know, it's black and white to me. And sometimes it ain't what you say, it's how you say it. And I need help sometimes saying it the right way. So there's things that I pray for. And if I'm not careful, I'll let the devil have a beachhead in my life with issues that I struggle with. Some people's may be pornography. Listen, you, 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 may be, you may be hung on pornography, and that's just something that, that's the standard in your life, and, and you can't get close to God because of that sin. Some people's hooked on online gambling. I didn't know that was a big thing. I see it sometimes come up on my um, Facebook or my, my uh, email. I wonder if I want to gamble. I wouldn't even know how to. You know, I, I'm, I'm still scared of PayPal. You know, I'm afraid somebody's going to, Pay all my pals, you know. <laughs> kind of worried about that. But listen, there's things in there that, that, that it's, it's kind of like, it's like we, we can get hooked on things. I mean, Facebook itself, listen, if you're not careful, you won't ever study God's Word because you get that few moments of time that you should spend studying God's Word and you turn your computer on just for a second, shoo, and they got you. You say, well, brother, that's not really sinful. Anything that keeps us from God is sinful. Anything that keeps us from the Lord and, and, and spending time with Him, listen, can grow into something monumental. It, it can be a real problem. And so we all have these things and people have them in their lives. Um, Saul has one. 
Paul was a revengeful man. I don't know if that's a real word, but Paul is a revengeful man. He, he, he don't, he, he's always, now he's going to start worrying all the time that somebody's going to try to knock him off. The first thing he recognizes is that the Spirit of God leaves him. See, before he always had the Spirit of God with him. When he was, when he was living right, when he was doing right, but then he began to sin. He began to do things that, that were prideful things. See, he was worried that, that uh, Samuel wasn't going to show up on the day he was supposed to, and, and the men started going home. In those, in those days, the army... Uh, wasn't conscripted like today where they go stay in barracks. No, they just come out from the farms and they all gathered out there. And the people that and people where they lived, their parents or whoever, took food out to them while they were out on the battlefield. And if they fought in another place, those folks would fight the battles. So Samuel, uh, Saul was worried that all of his army was going to go home. So he offered the sacrifice when he wasn't supposed to. Samuel said, wait here and I'll be there to offer the sacrifice. Well, he went ahead and did it without him. And that's where we get the thing that he said... Obedience is better than sacrifice. You better, better be obedient. In the Old Testament, only the prophets could offer sacrifice. Only the prophets. And nobody was to touch the Ark of the Covenant. You, you know, the, the golden ark. Nobody was to lay hands on it. I mean, they're, they're crossing the, the river, and it tilted to one side, and somebody went to push it to, to keep it in place, and they died from touching it. But you think, well, that's not bad. He was trying to keep it out of the water. God said, don't touch it. Man. I mean, is that... Is that is that really the way it is? I don't know that I don't know if this is the correct way to put it, but I believe that God wanted their first response to be obedience all the time. All the time. They didn't live under grace like we do. Their, their, first, their first response to anything that happened was obedience to what God had to say. You see, they had to do things to be right with God. The Holy Spirit didn't live inside them. The Holy Spirit didn't come to live inside the man to Acts chapter 1. So they were constantly doing things to be right with God. There are religions that still live by that today. If they do a certain amount of stuff, they'll be right with God and they can go to heaven in their eyes. But we know that Jesus is the door and nobody goes to heaven except through him. And, and, and the sad part is, is, is we as Christians sometimes don't even do a very good job even knowing that we get to go. You know, we're like spoiled children often, you know. Uh, we are given so much that we take so much for granted and I'm thankful that I have a God that loves me, even through my hard-headedness and my pridefulness. Verse 16 says, verse 15, Saul's servant said unto him, Behold, an evil spirit, behold, an evil spirit from God troubleth thee. Let our Lord now command thy servants, which are before thee, to seek out a man who is a cunning player on a harp. And it shall come to pass when the evil spirit from God is upon thee that he shall play with his hand and thou shalt be well. Isn't it something how God sets up kingdoms? You know, we've always heard that, that, that God sets up kingdoms. Who gave, who gave um, David the ability to watch sheep? God. Who, who gave David the ability to be warlike and courageous? God. Who gave him the ability to play the harp? God, I mean, we think about all the things that we have. There's people here that are good at things. And when you think about it, who blessed you with that talent? Brother Ricky, man, as far as welding and building and, 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 and fabricating stuff, probably one of the best right back there. Listen, different people in here have different abilities. And, and for whatever reason, that's just your thing. God's, God's blessed you with certain things you're good, good at music. That's, that's just your spot. And we look around here and people have those things. Don't you know that God has given you abilities to use for the kingdom? Some people's, some people's ability is organization. So, some people's is Sunday school teaching. I always like whenever people don't have the ability to do it, but God gives them the ability after salvation. It's like singing. It's like, like, like everything. You know, poor brother Brad up there. I see you, brother. He was worried to death. I said, listen, if you'll help us out for a couple of weeks, we'll see where we're at with music. And, and our, our music guy that we, we had come and we put him on to try him out and see if he liked it. And, and really, it was too much for him. He thought we were just a little small country church. I said, we are. He said, y'all have probably one of the largest congregations even in Waycross. He said, I know what you guys have to have. He said, I, and I, he said, I literally can't do it because I know what it needs. He said, so I, I'm sorry, I can't. 
I appreciate that. that. That's why we didn't hire him before we came in and tried him, you know. We wanted him to come and, and check us out. He said, I just know what it takes. He said, maybe when I'm older, I can help out. He said, but I, I know what you're going to have to have. Well, I appreciate that. You see, God has gifted people for certain things. And David was one of those people. God was setting David up at the right place, at the right time, at the right, at the right moments. Here, here it is. Verse 17, Saul said unto his servants, Will provide me now a man that can play well and bring him to me. Then answered one of the servants. Isn't it funny that there was one of the servants there that knew David could play the harp? The guy that was just anointed king. <laughs> that spells for bad news, doesn't it? Let's see what happens. Um, then answered one of the servants and said, Behold, I have seen a son of Jesse, the Bethlehemite, that is cunning and playing and mighty and a mighty valiant man, and a man of war, and, and prudent in matters, and a comely person, and the Lord is with him. See, there you go. Lord's with him. Everybody recognizes that. People that take part in David's life recognize. People follow him because the Lord is with him. The armies that follow David, they follow him because they see God with him. They want to honor God. They want to be on God's side, so they realize they want to honor and follow David. And that's going to cause him problems in the future. Verse 19, Wherefore Saul sent messengers unto Jesse and said, Send me, David, thy son, which is with the sheep. Isn't that funny? The king knew that David was out there with the sheep. I don't know if it was just a small world or that the, the, the David's popularity was already growing. I don't know. I don't know which. But he can already play a harp. People know about it. They already know he's valiant. He's brave, so people know about that. Somehow or another, these things are getting to the king. Um, and Jesse took an ass laden with bread and a bottle of wine and a kid and sent them by David, his son, unto Saul. And David came to Saul and stood before him, and, and he loved him greatly, and he became his armor bearer. Now, who, who, is, who is loving who greatly? Saul was, loving, Saul was loving David? I think so. I've heard people say that David loved him greatly. I think that was a given. I think it was a given that David loved the king. Because when you read, through, read this out throughout here, David never once takes advantage of Saul. So, but the Bible says here that Saul, I believe it, Saul loved David, and he loved him greatly. And David became his armor bearer, the person that was supposed to bring him protection. The person that was supposed to, to keep him safe, an armor bearer, when they go into war, uh, usually were, were killed long before even the, the warrior was killed because they didn't have armor. They, they, they carried the shield. You know, they may have had some leather on that protected from sword cuts or whatever, but uh, man, the, the, usually the warriors would have had all the armor and everything on, and the, the armor bearer died first. So he loved him greatly. Verse 22 said, And Saul sent to Jesse, saying, let David, I pray thee, stand before me, for he hath found favor in my sight. He loved David. He, he, David became his friend, and, and, and probably David looked up to him, and, and Saul probably liked the idea. Listen to this. David, Saul probably liked the idea of being a mentor. The Spirit of the Lord had departed from Saul, but the Spirit of the Lord was with David. You see I'm going with that? Saul wanted to be around the things of God. He missed those things, I'll bet you. And when David came in, the presence of God was on him. He could sense God's spirit. You ever sense God's spirit on people? I mean, does your spirit bear witness with folks? I, I can tell when it's not. You know, I've, I've talked to people in the past, and I've, I've, had, I've, I've talked to other ministers in different times, and, and uh, you can, not that you're judging fruit, but you know when your spirit bears witness. You know when you can go fishing with somebody. You, you know what I mean? You know when you can take a trip. You know, you, you know whenever you spend time with somebody. And, and David was somebody that Saul wanted to spend time with. Because Saul, because David was blessed by God. How is your life right now? Would people say that about you? I mean, whenever, whenever people talk about you in your life, is it important to you? that people see you as somebody that is with God, that follows God? Do they know you at work as a follower of Christ? 
Do they know you in town as a follower of God? The greatest name besides daddy and husband that I have is Brother Ray. Greatest name. Greatest name. You know, all the years with football players and you know, my 23rd or 4th year with the, with the ball teams and, you know, and, and now I'm coaching kids that, my, that was the first kids, their kids. And, and, and it's funny because their dads are telling them about Brother Ray. And, and listen, I'm going to tell you, it's an awesome responsibility to make sure that you do the right thing all the time because you just don't ever know. Listen, it's important. It's important that we recognize and, and chase after God. Listen, I, 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 wanna, I want the Holy Spirit, I want it to be alive in my life. I want to give myself to the Holy Spirit. Pe- people sometimes say, well, you know, whatever, you, you, know, you might get more of the Holy Spirit at times. When I got saved, I received the Holy Spirit. doesn't say I got part. It said I got the Holy Spirit. There are times in my life where I let the Holy Spirit have more of me. I mean, there, there are times in my life when I've got junk in there, and I know, listen, I know my prayers ain't leaving. They're not doing any good. My Bible study doesn't do very good. Um, you know, relationships at home, work, whatever, they all get kind of uh, abrasive. But if I, listen, if I get along with God and I begin to pray and ask God to, <clears throat> Lord, get my mind right, Lord, get my heart right, it's funny how other relationships start getting right too. I'm a little more understanding. I realize, that, you know, uh, the world don't revolve around me. And, and, and I, start, I start loving people a little bit better. You know, if I'm not careful, uh, folks will get on my nerves. You know, uh, uh, just, just, just in general. I don't know why. I, I don't know where that comes from. I don't know if I'm getting older, if it comes from with age. But, you know, sometimes folks get on my nerves. I, you know, I was, at, I was out there fishing today, and a fellow come up behind me in his boat. And uh, I, thought he, I thought he wanted to pass me. He just pulled up beside me and uh, wanted to know what I was fishing with. You don't ask a man what he's fishing with. Especially if you don't know him, you know. He said, uh, so I didn't lie. He said, you fishing with that right there? Well, I had fished with that. That wasn't what I caught any fish on. But I'd fished with that color beetle spin. And uh, he said, you catching them on that? Well, then he narrowed it down, see. I said, no, sir, I ain't catching a fish on that. What'd you catch them on? You know, you always want to use that kind of right here. But he didn't say that, you know. And it all, that's what I'm talking about, you know. And he followed me all the way to the boat ramp. We was, we was almost a buzzard roost. It's six miles. I thought, he's just standing right behind me. I, I said, I wonder if he wants my bait. He fell back to the boat ramp, got out. I got my boat, and, I, and, and he just, yeah, 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 yeah. You ever fish the Tiller River? I said, uh, no, sir, I don't ever fish the Tiller River. Where do you live? You fish on St. Mary's River? Listen, it's yep, 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 yep. And I thought, <sighs> does, that ever, does that ever bother anybody else? You, you know what, though? He was the happiest fella. He's the happiest fella. And, and I, I, had, I, t- I had to take just a minute and say, you know, here's a good place you can be rude. See, that's, that's something I struggle with. I got to be careful. So I stopped and we talked a long time. You know, but it's, it's things like that that we have to work on. I may not ever see that fellow again. I've never seen him in my life. May not ever see him again. It's like the Lord sent, sent something by just to, you know. <laughs> yeah. He was headed out to Buzzard Roost to fish. And we passed him. He said, hey, what you fishing with? And that was it. And, he, and I, 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 I kept going, you know. Boy, he followed by. Chased me for three miles and slowed me down. I told him I was fishing with. And then he didn't go fishing. I don't know. You see how, how God works in our lives. Does things that happen at your work? Do people get on your nerves? Do issues come up? Listen, how you handle things, how you handle spots that show up in your life, is really, really who you are. Isn't that true? How we handle things. Somebody said, it's not how we act, it's how we react. It's how we react to things. You'll find out here uh, stories about David as we go on in here about David. You'll find out stories about him that he reacted uh, well, Saul didn't. 
We're going to find out here that Saul, as he, as he progressed through his life with the Spirit of God now not on him, we're going to see his life go downhill. The Spirit of God's not going to be with him any longer. You know, one of the greatest things that we have is the assurance that today that when the Spirit of God moves in, he's with us forever. You see, here, the Spirit of God, it, 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 it wasn't inside them. It was an outward thing. It was an outward show. They had to do certain things to be right. And the Spirit of God was on them. The Bible says, There's therefore, therefore I know condemnation of those that are in. So now I'm in. They were on. Because it says here, Spirit of God was on him. Spirit of God was on him. He's in us. So there was a difference in those days. So we're thankful, I'm thankful, that the Holy Spirit of God lives in me. And now I don't have to worry about, you know, troubling spirits or, or the demons or whatever in this world that can cause me to be shipwrecked. Because, I, listen, I can do dumb stuff without help from demons. But I know that even if I do, that I'm still God's. I'm still a child of the King. So I ought to act like it. I ought to want to live for Christ. I ought to want to do the things. Listen, who you are when nobody's looking is who you are. I mean, that, that, that's it in a nutshell. So as, as I pray and as I go about doing my things, those are the things that God, in my own personal life, my personal walk, those are the things that God's working on me as I get older. Those are the things that God's showing me more. It's not about my, my public time or preaching time or teaching time or, or going out and eating time with friends and stuff. It's about when it's just me and him. And, and, and God's trying to fine-tune those, those moments. And now I look forward to them. Now I look forward to them. That's why I think it's important to memorize Scripture. Because when I pray, I want to be able to remember Scripture. I, I might not quote it verbatim, but I want to remember Scripture. I want to remember in Isaiah that it says not to flatter the wicked. I want to remember in Scripture... Uh, that it says in Proverbs that a word fitly spoken is like apples of gold and pitchers of silver. I, I want to remember those things so that when I pray and when I'm talking to God, you know, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. I'm never closer to God than when I'm in the Scripture or I'm, or I'm reading it or I'm talking about it in my prayer time. I do my best to talk about Scripture. When I'm praying, I want to be reminded of Scripture. And it's almost like God just opens opens the umbrella of heaven when I'm praying and, and, and when Scripture's mentioned. Because that's what God gave me to know about Him. So I want to know all I can. If, if you're not in a Bible study right now, if you don't have something going on besides this church time, if this is it for you, you're not very going to be very healthy as a Christian. If this is the only time you're praying, you're not going to be very healthy. And, and I'm going to tell you something. From somebody that had, has times in their life where it was dry, and I've understood the reasons it was dry. There were some outward things that came in that upset me or things that were wrong. But it always stemmed from my lack of being in this book. That, that, it always exacerbated the problem. Made it worse every single time. Every time that I was away from God, I was away from this first. Got away from the Word, it wasn't long, I was away from God. I get away from the Word, I'm away from God. How's your prayer time tonight? Anybody want to testify about their prayer time? Anybody want to testify about their Bible study time? That's right.
Yeah, I me. Mean. Yeah. Well, you know, a lot of times, oh, I'm sorry, but a lot of times we don't like the word, we're afraid to use the word intimate. We think that only applies to between our husband and wife. No, the word intimate means a, a really close relationship where both people feel what the other one feels. Now, we can have an intimate relationship with our Heavenly Father. Amen. I mean, we can have intimate relationships as we grow closer to each other. And as we grow closer as people, we, we care for each other. We know about each other. But my relationship to God um, it should be the, the relationship that I'm the most intimate mentally, emotionally, with because that that relationship strengthens every other relationship so whenever we think about our relationship with god sometimes we we forget that god wants us to be close why why does it say he's a jealous god because he wants our time he wants our presence he wa listen god wants us our the greatest thing i think we've been given is our free will and i believe through our free will god wants us to say Lord, I want to spend some time with you. I want, I want to pray. I want to talk to you. I, 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 want, to, I want to take this time aside and, and, and get down on my knees and pray. I think it's important. I think it's important to prostrate yourself in front of God, to get down. And, and, and I, I think it's important to use this altar. I know some people never come to the altar and they think, well, you know, that's no big deal. No, it's a big deal. I've said it before. It's mentioned 433 times in my Bible. I think it's important. And, and listen, when we can come to this altar, we're humbling ourselves. We're telling people here that I may or may not have a problem, that I may be just coming down to praise the Lord, or I might be coming down to pray for somebody else. But it don't matter what you think. I'm going to come and humble myself down before my Heavenly Father. People don't use the altars anymore. I know, I know some, I, matter of fact, I knew an old timer. I was doing some work on his air conditioner 20 years ago. He's uh, dead and hopefully gone to heaven. But when he moved to folks, and there was a certain church that he went to because he went to the same denomination where he came from, up north. Well, that denomination up north, man, undoubtedly was on fire. He said, and he said, man, I was a, I was a deacon. He said, and, and I was regularly at the altar praying with people. He said, if somebody go down, I'd go pray with them. He said, but he said, no, nobody goes to the altar here. He said, and I went down to the altar the first Sunday I went and began to, to pray. He said, and, and, and uh, he said, and it wasn't a long prayer. He said, they sang a verse of invitation, and, and then that was it. They, was, they stopped, and he said, I could sense something was happening. So I, I looked around, the preacher was standing up like I do right here. He said, the preacher looked around and said, are, are you okay? Do you need anything? He said, no. He got it, went back to his seat. A few weeks later, went down to the altar again. Somebody come down and said, brother, are you dealing with something? Is there a reason? Is there a reason? He said, no. He never went back to that altar again. Still went to the church. <laughs> Never went back to the altar again. Said nobody ever goes to the altar. Is, is it that we, that we as people don't want to humble ourselves before God? Is it that we don't want to give God the rope and give him the steered wheel and give, or give him the, the, the title or whatever to let God be God in our life? Our relationship ought to be intimate. And it was with David. You know, I, I, I'm going to see him in heaven one day. And I want to be able to talk to him about how his time was with God when he was young. That's important. I, mean, I wish I could know now, and I could take and teach it to these younger people. I wish I could take his life and show it to these younger people, and they try to mimic their lives after them. Listen, what we need now with our teenagers is for them to be intimate with God. Um, I saw Shane, Shane Barnes. They're not here. Uh, they're back there working. Anyway, Shane was in the swamp yesterday fishing with Cain, and Clara, 
Clara. Is that right? Clara? Clara. Anyway, so he's having trouble with his motor. His water pump was cutting up because of that muddy water. He was pouring water on his motor with a Gatorade cup. Changed the man. Well, they stopped up in front of me down there, and I, I said, well, something, his boat motor's quit. So I eased up beside him. I said, you good? He said, yeah, we got a question for you. I said, okay. He said, we were sitting around the supper table last night, and Clara wanted to know what it was going to be like or what we was going to look like when we got to heaven. That blessed my heart. We spent the next 20 minutes explaining to Clara and Cain and Shane where we'd be. You know, the Bible says we get glorified bodies, but we'll know each other as we're known here. Will we look the same? Will it matter? I don't know. I don't know, but the Bible says we get brand new bodies, so we'll at least have this. I don't know. I hope I don't have this through all eternity. That'd be pretty big, you know. If I get one wish, don't give me this, Yeah. But what blessed my heart was is that there's, there's a mom and daddy, and I'm glad they ain't in here tonight. There's a mom and daddy that in their house, it's okay to talk about God and ask big questions. And, and, and what's even bigger is they said they didn't know. They'd find out. They'd find out. And that's what they did. Listen, God wants a relationship with us. I can see Cain as mean as he is. Listen, that boy not to bark off something. But I see that little fellow as a teenager having a relationship with God and him being the kind of person other kids follow. Because he serves God, they'll follow. They'll serve. You know, you see these little guys' lives and you pray those things happen. Amen. We're going to have a um, word of prayer and then we're going to have an altar call. If you'd like to come and pray, pray about your relationship. Your, this time, where are you with the Lord? And as, as, as we have this, this altar call time, if you'd like to come and pray, please do. Let's pray. Lord, thank you again for your blessings, God, for all your goodness. We, we thank you, God, that, that we can come and that we have this opportunity to, to this beautiful building with air conditioning and lighting, that we can come down on a carpeted um, altar and kneel down and pray. We just thank you, God, that, uh, that you, you uh, want a relationship with us. Um, it's, it's a... It's a, it's a uh, a thing that behooves us, Lord, to chase after. Help me, God, in my, my own personal life to uh, look for those moments and to spend more time and to, to, to set aside uh, moments in the early morning to spend time with you. Thank you for this week and all the time that I've had. Lord, I just praise you, God, that, that I've seen you in nature this week and seen you move in people's lives and seen children talk about you this week. God, it's such an awesome thing. Help us, God, to be the leaders, the parents, the adults, and the mentors that you called us to be, so these little fellows know how to do it. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you'd like to come, please do. Make me broken so I can be healed because I'm so callous now I can't feel I want to run to you With heart wide open Make me broken Make me empty So I can be filled Cause I'm still holding Onto my
kids that come here and pray for our ministries going on this summer. And uh, let's pray we have a good week. Anybody have anything to say before we dismiss? Yes, sir. Remember Miss Wilson. Um, another thing completely different than that. We, we've got a lot of stuff in the kitchen. Old stuff. that are old cookers. I don't know if, if some of you if some of you know. Some of them work. Some don't work. Some of the ladies that are working in the kitchen, they brought some newer stuff in. They want to leave here. But there's a lot of stuff that may or may not work. Older things. Is anybody, if, if there's something back there that you might can uh, instruct Miss Vicky and them on, Maybe let them know that works, don't work, old pots, um, coffee pots. I think somebody said there was there's several food processors. and <clears throat> They're trying to clean up back there, get it all in order, and, and get those things. If there's some things that you know, see them. They don't want to just throw it out. They want to do something with it, put it up, give it to somebody that can use it. But uh, it's good that there's new people involved with things, and they all want to get involved. So... Um, um, if some of you ladies or men know about some of those things, about her, get with Miss Vicky um, and um, Miss Karen, Miss Karen, John's wife. Um, any others? If not, brother, would you dismiss us in prayer?